Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luan brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. On the show today, I have Darla Powell of Darla Powell Interiors in Florida. You will hear how Darla and I became friends first through the social media of the podcast, and then it continued in the designer Facebook groups that we're both in and on Instagram. And the thing is, I thought I knew a pretty good amount about Darla, but thankfully, and like always, I always go out and do my research before the interview. And boy, oh boy, was I surprised to learn a few things about Darla. Now, I'm not going to give it any of it away. You'll have to listen to the interview and see, but I think you're going to be very surprised, especially if you are in one of those Facebook groups with us or you know her through Instagram to learn some of these details. So stay right back, right there while I tell you about curatedkravit.com and I'll be right back with Darla. And I'm just going to say, by the way, before I go, have you used your 10% off code on, for curatedkravit.com purchase? yet? And have you even gone to look at the website for curatedkravit.com yet? If you have been listening to this podcast for a year and a half and you haven't done either of those things, I mean, I'm just saying, guys, <laughs> at least go to the website and check out what you're missing. Okay. All righty. Hang on. I'm going to give you more details about curatedkravit.com and then I'll be right back with Darla. I'm so proud to tell you that our podcast is sponsored by Kravit Inc. featuring curatedkravit.com. You know because I've told you a million times that I've been a Kravit customer since the early 1980s. And the truth is I can't say enough great things about Kravit Inc. Except to tell you that now there's curatedkravit.com. At curatedkravit.com they work so hard to source high quality items for you and for your clients. And they really do make it very easy to find that unique piece to complete your interior design project. Do you know what a couple of my favorite parts are? First, it's trade only. That's right. They have your back at Kravit Inc. Second, they have no minimums. Isn't that awesome? And third, the ordering process is a snap. Design click delivered. It's so easy. You need to visit curatedkravit.com today and be sure to use your discount code CKPODCAST. You get to use that code for one order and you will get 10% off that entire order. CK Podcast at curatedkravit.com. Hi, Darla. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Thank you so much for having me, Luann. I have to tell you, this is an incredibly surreal experience. <laughs> That's funny that you describe it that way, because I'm going to share not only with you, but with all of our friends listening that... It's not unusual for me to have become good friends with the different people that have been on the podcast after their interviews. So we continue our relationship so easily through social media and some people through the phone, depending on the level of the uh, friendship. But for you and I, Darla, we have been friends for many, many months through social media and not just like in this, but actually conversing and talking. And now we're getting a chance to speak. So it's happening reverse. <laughs> right. We're deconstructing That's the it. relationship. Yes. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting for me and I like it. And I'll just say that we have a um, few common friends, of course, Mark McDonough from Tastefully Inspired and uh, Karina also from Tastefully, who, well, yes. Karina from Superior K Interiors, right? And she is yes. a guest blogger for Mark and she has been a guest on this show. So we are connected all through these guys and, and it actually is at Mark's impetus that I invited you to be on the show because I was talking to Mark over the 4th of July holiday a couple of weeks ago and we're chatting and this and that and he's like, oh, and you know, by the way, he said, you <laughs> should think about having Darla on the show. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, you know what's really cool about Darla? And I said, what? And he goes, she <laughs> is going to be 
an amazing interior designer. She's not just oh, thinking. Wow. Yeah, he did. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, Luann, this is a second career for her. She's retired from her first career and she is putting her all into this. And I was like, Ah, well, that's a story. Mm. I like that Intriguing. angle. <laughs> yes. And so <laughs> the thing now, Darla, is you have to share with everybody what you shared with me off air, what that first career was. Because I'm just saying everybody in our mutual Facebook groups that we're in and our mm -hmm. Instagram pod, like, sit down before Darla says this. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I'll give him a second. I, well, you know, it's not a career that, um, you know, would be anything that would surprise anyone, I don't think, for someone who goes going into interior design I, I, at all. I don't understand why you would think it would be a big deal at all. Um, <laughs> I was in law enforcement for 18 and a half years, 17 and a half of which were in Miami-Dade County oh my with Miami-Dade Police Department. I was actually a detective sergeant and oh when I retired. That, yeah, not surprising at all. Yeah, Total so, segue. Yeah, it's nat exactly. It's a very natural transition. So I, I don't understand why anyone would be surprised by that. You know, and the thing is that I'm just going to add to this to anybody listening that is not familiar with the Florida area on a, you know, pretty intimate level of knowledge basis. Miami-Dade is no normal precinct here. This is like <laughs> the Bronx or South Side in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, Definitely. this is like, I mean, look, let's be real. Any police station in any place in the world is a, a job where your life is on the line. I mean, every day of the week, there's no question about it. But then you add to it a place like Miami-Dade, that, I mean, that is like big time stuff. So, yeah, I would say to you, Darla, yeah, I'm not thinking that the sergeant at the current <laughs> Southside Chicago's police station is thinking about, really want to quit this job and become an interior designer. <laughs> well, and that's exactly the thought I had every day for 18 and a half years and finally just said, you know what, the heck with it. Let oh. me just go for it. And, that's uh, amazing. Voila, that's am. amazing. So, so the thing is, let's let's talk about that a little bit because there's a lesson in there, I'm sure, for your interior design colleagues listening, um, and for because here's what happens: there is probably somebody listening out there, Darla, that hasn't made that change yet, and they're thinking you know what, I listen to this show because I like the field, but I'm still a school teacher. Or I'm still, a, you know, a rocket science, whatever, scientist, whatever the amazing <laughs> thing they're doing. But as long as you're not doing what you want to do, that's mm -hmm. the thing. So what, what happened? Why did it take so long? And how did you come to make the change? Tell us a little bit about that. All right. So, you know, when I was younger, back years ago, um, I was, you know, kind of floating around doing sales jobs. And I was like, what the heck am I going to do with my life? And I saw an advertisement in the newspaper for wildlife officer. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be so cool. I'm going to be in the park. I can pet Bambi. This is going to be my jam. It's going to be awesome. So I get interviewed. I get hired. I'm like, holy crap. This is I'm going to be a cop. This is law enforcement. Oh. And, uh, you know, long story short, one year later, I said, you know what, the Bambi gig isn't for me because, you know, they're hunting Bambi. And I would drive through the parks on my little loudspeaker saying, run, Bambi, they're coming, run. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so I said, what am I going to do? I wonder why we never <laughs> get any of the animals when Darla's on the shift. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't at all what I thought it would be. In fact, quite the opposite. But I was like, well, you know, I have this I have this uh, certificate. What am I going to do with it? You know, I, I'm can do something with it. So I applied for Miami-Dade and another 17 years, I, I just stayed with them, you know, because job, benefits, pension, you know, mortgage, car life, payments. Right. Yeah. Life happens. Uh, life, exactly. Right. Yeah. Life so, happens. And it, it does. It happens to a lot of us that you, you know, you just put aside the hopes and the dreams because you get involved in making a life and, and being responsible for all the things in that life. And they exactly. cost money, all the things in our lives do, right? Do. So what happened? So the other really surprising thing to me that I learned was that you only just started your business this past January, you said, December? What, like you only left the police police force. Tell us that little bit because I remember thinking, right. and I, I was like asking just so everybody knows, I was asking her a different question. I'm like, okay, stop telling me. I want to hear it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop. Okay, no, 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 don't, don't answer. <laughs> All right. Well, funny story, and this is another reason why you and I have crossed paths is because about a year ago, 
you know, I'm still working the, in the police department, of course, and I'm out running before my shift and I'm listening to design podcast on, from iTunes and I come across your design podcast and I'm listening to your show and I'm hearing your guest and forgive me, my, my memory's horrible, but you had one guest on there that actually did, you know, they had a daytime job and then they went to full service interior design and that really motivated me and got me, th- got me, got me thinking, you know, she did this. I can do this. Right. And listening to your guests throughout the year, that was probably about a year ago. So I would say from May to December, this just had me brewing and stewing because I had been, you know, designing on an amateur semi-professional level for years. And my friends and family had said, you know what, you really missed your calling, which I don't know what they were trying to say about my cop skills. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, you should really be doing interior design. And And I was just at a space in my life that the universe said, you know what? Try it, do it. So we started part time in December and started just getting too busy to carry both. And I actually officially retired March 26th of this year. Wow, that's amazing. I love that. I love that so much. So that's exactly what I was thinking about. It was like, there could be somebody (laughs) out there now listening to you. And either, you know, they're early in their career, and they just it's a couple of years, or they're 17, 18 years, and it still can happen. And so what I was really surprised about, Darla, is that There is nothing about the way you have presented yourself in these last six, seven months that says new designer. As a matter of fact, I was surprised to learn that you only started, again, I'm sorry for everybody because Darla and I talked and we just hit it off and that's what happens when somebody's already my friend. So I have to kind of (laughs) fill you in. Um, But so you heard Mark McDonough on Tastefully Inspired, Mark McDonough of Tastefully Inspired on my podcast last November, I think he was on. And that's when you started your Instagram account or that's when you started into implementing his policies, his tips. Which one was it? Yeah, it, actually, you know what? It's funny. Was that his first show in November? Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK, so that is actually when I did start all the social media with the business and getting my logo and the design was after hearing his show. I think his show actually was a catalyst because I actually emailed him and I said, you know, you were very inspirational. And he had said some uh, words that just really, it was just like, you know what? Yeah, let me just dive in. Let me do it. And I emailed him and uh, started my uh, social media accounts and uh, the response was just crazy way more than I thought it would be because I wasn't supposed to retire until 2018. Oh, and you were yeah. supposed to do a whole nother year there. Yeah, exactly. So I was waiting for that. But no, it just, it's been overwhelming, truthfully, in a good way. Right. But well, yeah, you're that, right. Well, and that's the thing that I was so surprised to learn because when you told me that you only started all of your social media in, you know, December or whatever of 2016, I was like, wait, but we've known each other for way longer than that. <laughs> for years. Yeah. Like I just, I, I just, I just really was floored because a, I really felt like that we had been interacting like practically from the beginning of the podcast, number one, but number two, I literally had to go back and look at your stuff. And I was like, Oh my goodness, this woman is a brand new baby designer. Like you, you really do an excellent job, Darla, of presenting a very um, seasoned t- uh, professional face to your design firm. It, it really is remarkable. And the other thing I'm going to say is, let's just plug Mark again here. Mm-hmm. And at this point in time, your Instagram is seven, eight months old and it has 7,000 followers. I think it's 7,100 and change, oh actually, my today. <laughs> that, you know what that means? That means you've gotten 100 since I researched you four days ago. Thank you very much. That's exactly, because I have the number written right here, 7,025. So I'm just saying, and that was, I think, Thursday and it's Sunday. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, that's an insane, it takes an insane amount of OCD attention to achieve that on Instagram. It's, it's I you know, and now that I'm getting busy, 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 I, it, I don't have the time to to nurture it like I have been, but um... well, but the thing is, so now I'm just looking as we're talking. Mark was on episode 110 on December 7th. 
So that's so really okay. Yeah, December. That's yeah, that's, crazy. That's, that's about right. That's about when I start fired it up. Yeah. Yep. So now here's the thing that you know what that says to me that I'm missing the boat here because <laughs> I listen to Mark's show. I talk to Mark through that show, <laughs> and I wrote down those same tips. And clearly, I have not been very actionable in yes. instituting those tips because I don't have seven thousand followers on Instagram. Fast, but you, what yes. you have the the biggest tip that he gave me is and it's the it's the, been the most helpful and I even told Karina and Karina wasn't doing it quite the way I said and she was like oh you're full of baloney this isn't working and I said no you have to do this and what I explained to her was, was is you pick you pick brand accounts that appeal to your client your ideal client or something that you think their followers would be a fit for your business mm-hmm. people with you know a good amount of following like Um, let's see today I posted on better homes and gardens and they have almost 900,000 followers and the tip is to find these accounts that fit your brand and put your little post notifications on so every time that they post you get a little alert and you're like oh you know they posted let me be the first to post and then those 900,000 people are seeing better homes and gardens blah 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 blah, and then Darla Powell interiors right underneath it as the first post and it's time consuming. <laughs> it's Can very, imagine? yeah, it's, you have to be very tenacious and very diligent. And as I'm getting busier, a lot of them just, you know, go by the wayside. But I am still doing like today. That's all morning. That's all I did. Whoa. And so what's mm-hmm. happening is, is so, so I have to say, I'm just going to run through it again, because I know Mark told it to me and I didn't do it clearly. So what you're saying is, is First, I think it's very smart advice, Darla, to find brand accounts that align with what you do and what the way your design is. So, for instance, if your um, aesthetic is not traditional home or something, if then don't do that one. Like find, I don't know what would be, you know, you know what I'm saying, like right. So that's what right. you're saying. Find the things that. Or you, you don't even have to get that particular. You no. can just find something in the interior design genre, um, unless it's something that's really totally against, you know, you. Would never like you wouldn't comment um honestly you know you wouldn't say oh i like that if you really don't you want it to be genuine and heartfelt but just interior design is pretty good enough if you're an interior designer that, okay, that so there's work. something you can, yeah. something you, but it is, I hear what you're saying though. And I just like things that really do align better with us because again, mm-hmm. to your point, you can be more authentic and truthful in your comments about it. If you, if it is something that you truly admire their work and how they do it. So, but what you're saying is find these and we're talking mm-hmm. about accounts with 500, 600, seven, like how many hundreds of thousands of followers? Or are we, are we okay if it's an account with 40,000 followers? What's our yeah. criteria? You, you know what? You can you can go big, and I do like to go big because I'm trying to make my time more efficient. Mm. <laughs> but if there are smaller accounts with 40 or 50 or even 10, if you think it really is fitting your um, business niche, mm-hmm. you know, if, it, if it's really, if the, the, those clients you think are really like valuable clients to comment and like, then yeah, that's fine. It's whatever fits with you, really. But the key is to get in there, be the first to comment. And also, um, if you go down the list of uh, people's comments and you see something that they comment that's genuinely, you know, that you like or appreciate, put a little heart, you know, mark the little heart, like their comments. I mean, don't be disingenuous. So now here, I have a question for you on that because Mm -hmm. I, I, matter of fact, there, I I wish I could pull out my phone if I could walk and talk at the same time, I would do it at the same (laughs) time, but I can't. Um, But it's interesting that you say that because I... Oh, well, I and Kimberly out there, Kimberly K Interior, she'll know that I've done this a hundred times because I'm that I'm always doing it to her. <laughs> Kimberly <laughs> K Interiors has been such a cheerleader for me. She literally goes in and s- says to other accounts, other interior designers, she'll they, they might post something that she likes of their work and she'll compliment their work, and then she says to them, "And by the way, have you found a well-designed business podcast yet?" And tags me, right? And so oh, it's perfect. so, I know it's so lovely of her to do this for me. And I'm so appreciative. And I thanked her and she's like, are you kidding? I'm happy to do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But the point is that when you say comment on somebody else's comment, when I mm-hmm. try to do that, half the time it ends up in a private comment to that person. No, and you just hit them. 
I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, and it's like, and I'm just like, how did I get switched to private? <laughs> and so with Kimberly, I did it like three times and I'm like, okay. And I'm like, head smack. I keep doing this to you. You know what I'm saying? But then, so now when I do it to her by accident, she's even taken the time to explain it to me. And I'm just like, I, I, I might have done, I don't know. And so now when I do it to her, we just laugh at it, move on. But I did it <laughs> the other day to some influencer with a big following. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to comment on his comment. And it went to private. And I was like, okay, now you look like that girl. I'm like, and I, so I, then I had to put in the thing. I'm so sorry. to him. Yes. Right. I had to put in the, in the, in the private comment. I'm so sorry to intrude on you. I am so tech challenged. I, and he's like, ah, no, don't worry about it. But I swear, Darla, if I comment on somebody else's comment in somebody else's post, it keeps showing up in a private direct well, message. I think I may have misspoken. The comment would be for the actual post itself and then the the for the individual comments that you see like if you like what they said yes. just click the little heart beside them and oh, then they'll get a little notification that says Luann Nagara liked my post who's that let me go check her out Think. okay see there it is Sorry, that I was... misspoke, no but I'm I've had this whole disconnect on this <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I am. I'm like three left th- thumbs when it comes to this stuff half the time. And Kimberly, my Kimberly now, you know, she'll be like, do you know that you blah, blah, blah? I'm like, I know, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> that guy's probably following you for life now. I don't know. <laughs> but I was like, because, you know, he was, like I said, a big influencer. I don't recall who it was, but it was like totally like you don't have, you are not at the level where you have not established anything. You can't just private message this guy like what? You Evidently, doing? you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so, okay, so I love that. Now, so that's a huge, huge tip. Are there other tips with Instagram that you can think of that we should, as long as you have 7,100 followers now, that right. we could share with people? Isn't that freaky? Um, it is. Freaky. Yeah, just uh, is. just what I had said before, just to be very genuine and to engage. And again, these are things that take time. And since I'm new, I have a little bit more time than some more established designers who might want to hire this part out. Mm. Um, but when people do comment on your pictures and your, you know, whatever it is you post on there, you know, try to reply, say thank you, you know, engage with them because that makes you human. Right. And you're, you know, it, it, it also helps your you know, mm-hmm. your brand and your, and who you are as a brand. Well, you like know, I said, for person. you, you came off to me totally like a seasoned interior designer. And, and, and I will say it was a lot because of that, the fact that your comments are um, on point. In other words, you're not just like, yay, or like, or whatever, you know, <laughs> by the way, I'm so guilty of that. So I have Great to say, pick. <laughs> yeah, Great pick, exclamation mark. I know I'm the worst with that stuff. <laughs> but, I do, do that sometimes. I do. I, now learning that I have to, you know, I, I, it's just, there's so much, well, you know what it comes down to? I'm going to say it comes down to what is your goal? If your goal is to just simply support another uh, colleague or another brand or anything else, then you know what? I think great pick and a heart is perfectly fine. But if your goal is to build your own account in addition to supporting other accounts, then you do have to be a little bit more intentional with the comments. And so, Mm -hmm. I mean, would you agree with that? If my goal is just to support anybody or everybody, then who cares? Then actually just say (laughs) great pick because it's a great pick. And that's another thing too, because just because you get the followers doesn't mean they're going to stay. Mm. So once they once they're there, you do that the engagement and showing that you know you you really you know are interested in what people have to say and you you should be it should be genuine. They stay. Mm. They don't you know they don't Move go away. On. So that's because I think you can only I'm not sure you might maybe Mark would know this. I think there's a limit to how many people you can follow on Instagram. Mm. That I'm not sure about. But okay. And what are you? What is your feeling on? the follow back like so now you put your you're the first comment on a on a a, a feed mm-hmm. that has 500,000 followers and maybe you get four more followers do you just instantly follow everybody back or do you how do I you I don't okay I I don't and the reason why is because I just I just don't have time for right. to keep up with all all those people on my feed in fact actually I have a lot of followers right now I mean I'm following a lot of people, sorry, that don't follow me back because in the beginning, I used to just go down uh, interior design accounts and, you know, like people, Mm -hmm. which I do not recommend because now, you know, they're on there and I'm, you know, they're not following me back. But um, no, I don't unless it's something that's relevant to my industry. Mm -hmm. You can't because like I said, I think there is a maximum. I want to say it's 7,000. Okay. But I'm not sure. Okay. 
So yeah, I, I, I struggle with that, too, because part mm-hmm. of me feels like if a designer is going to follow me, I have to instantly follow back. Um, but then I worry about what the other part of it, like you said, being mm-hmm. a supportive follower of that person. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly struggling with it. I'm like, oh, I got a, you know, another designer follow me. I should hit follow. I'm like, ah. <laughs> or I'm, it's almost like having another kid. Am I going to take care of this one? Should I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can until whatever that magic number is. And again, I want to say 7,000. But if you look at any of the bigger accounts I mean they don't they they just can't and I think people understand that Mm. I think they do know that you're not going to follow them back and it's okay to have fans that you don't follow back Mm. as long as you're putting out you know good content they're still going to they'll still love you (laughs) 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 they won't take it personally I don't think most of them I hope it's funny and then what it would I one tip that I do remember from Mark's was about establishing the set of hashtags did you do you do that Darla you know, I do. I'm still experimenting with that, though, and I'm actually kind of lazy about it because I should have a list that I just copy and paste, but I don't. Mm. I, I, I hashtag according to what I post, Okay. and I still haven't I still haven't figured out the hashtag game. So He doesn't do that. He doesn't hashtag necessarily according to what he posts. I noticed that because w- that's one of the things I have looked at at what he does. He basically has come up with, you know, a list of, you know, maybe eight or 10 or 20 lists of hashtags that work for him, and he just puts them up regardless of the picture sometimes. I think. Yeah, I I, I probably should do that, but I just, I I haven't. Yeah, I try and I try and have it have some relationship to the picture, but if I'm really busy, it's like, whatever, these hashtags are going up. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it's like, I'm at a traffic light, and this guest <laughs> hasn't had their picture up in three hours, and we got to put that out there. Up, oh, it's Hashtag green, I gotta light. go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm lazy with it. I really am. As, as diligent as I am with it, with the hashtags, I, I could be more. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right, so now here's the thing, Darla. So mm-hmm. I, um, now we're establishing that we're recording this in July that you're officially full-time as an interior designer only since the end of March. That's very, very (laughs) soon. I would say that anybody, when they're done um, listening to the show, they should go to your website. Is it just DarlaPowellInteriors.com? Yep. It's actually DarlaPowell.com, but either one will get them there. Okay. And um, so what I also learned was that you have a very beautiful project up on the website. And what I learned is that that's your home, that project, right? That's what you decided to put up there because you needed to put something up and you had done the work in your own home. Is that right? Tell us a little bit about that. Right. So, you know, I know from listening to your show also um, that, you know, when I wanted to start, I wanted to present a professional, you know, polished image. And I didn't have clients right then and there to put up my website. I'm not going to put out social media, Darla Powell Interiors, and they're like, where do we go? Where do we see yourself? <laughs> so uh, my partner and I decided, you know what? Let's just re- remodel the house. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we were going to start out with just the bathroom, a little small project, and it ended up being the entire house. Talk about a business and, expense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I actually am going to put a, a blog from, you know, a whole blog about the before and after and the process of it, but I haven't put that together yet. But that that's it. That's my that's my first portfolio, and I have some other projects that are going to wrap up here in a month or two to add to my portfolio, but... Well, that I have to say, it presents perfect. your work very well. It really does. It, it's beautiful, the work that's on the on Thank the uh, website. You really guys, and, and to know that that's where you live, that's really cool. So, <laughs> Thank you. Now, I did and, it with my budget, so you did. Oh, <laughs> there so might that's... be some stuff in there that you know I would prefer to add to it, or but you know it is it's you know, my house, my budget. So that's so. it. Well, that's but, that's a that's a great thing to be able to eventually say to a client that look at how beautiful it works. And I there's a designer here that I work with and um, we have this game. I've mentioned it on the podcast before. It's like the Where's Waldo game because <laughs> she's – look, we, we, with Window Works, I'm very fortunate to work with a lot of very high-end luxury designers, Sandra Funk and Charles Pavarini and these guys. But, you know, I also work with a lot of interior designers that are just in their pool doing their work and, and not worried about, you know, shopping at the D&D or anywhere else. And they go out to, you know, the different retail showrooms and get the furniture for their clients and get the fabric at Cal and you know that's how it goes but this one interior designer here in our area I'm going to tell you what you would never believe that she is shopping all of this stuff retail and that it is not coming from the the most high-end trade resources for her furnishings and accessories and stuff and it's not to say that some of it isn't sourced from higher end locations but it the thing about it is is she has no compunction to walk into a home goods and accessorize (laughs) a home and I always we always make 
make a joke that it's like, where's Waldo? Like, which piece on the mantle is the home goods piece, or which piece in the dining room is a home? And I can never pick it out. I have I'm, I have the worst radar <laughs> for that. But and it's and but it's a testament to her skill because mm-hmm. she really does have the ability to mix high and low so right. effectively. That's and a good trick. It is. It really is. She's very very talented. I would say her name, but she doesn't want any new business. She's only oh, one. Yeah, wow. it's, yeah, it's funny. Her website is a closed website and you can only get it by getting a password and she will only give you the password if you are a referral from a previous customer or client of hers and she has room right then to take on a project. (laughs) (laughs) Someday, someday. Can you imagine? But like she, you know, she has such a great business model because she probably works a 40 hour work week. You know, it's not like, you know, that she's not working full time, but she has no desire to be under the gun and have to work a 60 hour work week because she has too much work on her on her plate just good for her yeah she just has it this is it i get up that's great yeah it's really really amazing i i could never lock it down like that i'd be like well we could do five more let's get five more who needs (laughs) hire all the people (laughs) yes (laughs) but she just i admire her so much she has got such a good head on her shoulders and she just gets up every day and she does her work and she has a great niche here in our area for that high low design it really is very well done that's a great I do use actually I use like uh, on the focal points I use more expensive finishings and then you know some of the less expensive to surround and kind of blend it and Mm -hmm. it looks more expensive than it is exactly some of my clients love that yes and I think that's a great feature to express to your clients that you that is something that you're capable of doing because not every designer is going to be you know a Marie Flanagan or a Laura Umansky these really high-end luxury designers you know a lot of a lot of people don't like like my friend has no desire to, to take on <laughs> a five hundred thousand dollar project it's like thank you I I'd rather work in this little you know pool over here so um, I think it does If you have that ability, it's maybe you don't actually say it on your website, but for what what you're, (laughs) but I can do it. Yeah. yeah, And that, but then once you have those couple of conversations with a client to be able to look and say, well, if you look at that shot on my portfolio, that's a little bit of a mix of high, low, then it's like, what it is. (laughs) Yeah. Or even middle low. (laughs) Yes. Right. 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 Again, my budget. Yeah. That's it. So very cool. So now you mentioned in there, your blog, Darla, and you are, an incredible writer. I mean, if you said to me that like Karina, you came from the education field, I would have believed that easy because, you know, Karina is also an amazing writer, but uh, and what is it? Tell us the name of the blog again. It's called Wingnuts and Wallpaper. Right. And what the heck does that mean? I've been meaning to ask you that. And now it's a good ch- a good time to, of course, I'm getting to know you like in verbal. So I'm sort of getting the Wingnuts personality, but I don't know. Is that where okay. it's... I take that as a compliment. That's, that's true. That's so, you know, my previous natural career as in law enforcement, you know, which we discussed is comes naturally to interior design, um, <laughs> you know, it, that was never really my passion or my thing. And when I would be on calls, especially as a, a younger officer, you know, we'd be on a call and I would see a puppy and I'd go, oh, look, puppy, you know, or, <laughs> or butterfly or bird. And my friends are like, oh, she's such a wing nut for and I, just out of the blue. And that stayed. And that's been my nickname with them, with that crowd ever since. Oh. So it, I just carried it over with me a little bit of sentimentality from my previous career and the, the wallpaper, which is obvious. That's cute. How did I, you, what, do you remember the moment that you had that idea to call it wing nuts and wallpaper? I do. I wasn't getting any subscribers because <laughs> I had named it something like the curated blog or something really <laughs> dry. I know, right? Exactly. And I said, you know what? Let me embrace me, you know, because I had kind of found my brand voice, which Nicole Heimer talked about at that um, seminar. Uh-huh. And it was to be myself. Uh-huh. I had someone recommend, you know, Darla, you're in interior design now. You need to be real serious and snooty. Oh and I'm goodness. like, you know what? I know. No, true story. And I'm like, you know what? No, I can't. I have to be myself. And that is, you know, down to earth, a little bit of sense of humor, kind of twisted sometimes. That's right. And I put that in my blog and I really owned it. 
and Good that's friends. that's my voice. And I love your blog too because it's Thank funny because it is funny and, and your personality comes right through. That's one of the reasons why I feel like I know you. It's not <laughs> only from our interactions with Instagram and Facebook and so forth like that, but also your blog. I, I mean, it cracks me up. I crack up out loud every time I read it. Uh, that makes me ha- very happy. <laughs> yes, very you happy. always have a line where and and what's funny is, of course, I'm lo- reading it and picturing you. So then I even am <laughs> laughing even harder. I'm like, this girl is a Nice. Well, you know, this can be a really dry subject. And, you know, people that aren't interior designers read it and they're like, oh, how to hang curtains, yes. really? So, you know, I try to pep it up a little bit and make it entertaining. And Well, and, and that's funny that you brought that particular post up because I have to say, I'm even, I, I keep expressing how uh, surprised I am that you're only in business six, seven months and full time for only a couple because the knowledge base is pretty in depth there. So, for instance, that post on how to hang curtains, Darla, I have to say, I don't know that I have ever read a post by an interior designer on how to hang curtains where there wasn't something that I went, no, I don't agree with that. <laughs> wow, that's some serious scrutiny there, too. Yes. I mean, and I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I like, don't ask me to write a post on how to do a floor plan. Like, forget it. It's going to be a hot mess. But, you know, the curtains are, draperies are technical. And, and of course, there is a lot of opinion on different things. But I usually find there's at least one thing in somebody's post on a window treatment that I think, yeah, that's, you shouldn't have said that. Like, that's not <laughs> true. <laughs> but I, and I was like reading yours and I was like, all right, let's see. Step one, number two. And I'm like waiting for it. And I was like, well, heck, Darla, you go, rock star. You know? oh, thank you. That means a lot to me because you would be like the ultimate uh, reviewer for that one. So thank you so much. <laughs> yes. I mean, and, and look, it's, it's whenever I see these and they're not exactly right. And I don't even necessarily mean, I can't even tell you that I've read them from any previous guests or anybody connected to the podcast. I'm talking about in my 30 years in the career when I'm out on the internet or something comes across my my desk on it and I read it and I'm like this you know so I'm not talking about anybody that I know I'm just talking about it's so common to read a post on window treatments and it's just like that's completely wrong information on that whole step or something and so so for to find that you were new at it so what what did you do I mean obviously you're telling us how it's been your passion your whole life so did you come home from you know being a sergeant at miami dade and like read architectural digest like how did you exactly you, ex- that's uh, just for years i pour over design magazines design manuals design books i've been doing this since i, I used to decorate my tree houses with <laughs> oil paintings <laughs> <laughs> that my mother had in the garage don't tell her hope she's not listening and put them up in my tree houses my little forts I've just been doing this forever oh, so it's been goodness. my passion and and that part of it comes so naturally isn't that something that's amazing I I have to say I remember Kelsey Gross uh, from the farmer's daughter interior the same thing she's now in business just over a year and I was so, when I interviewed her she hadn't hit her one year anniversary and I was so impressed also with um, the the level of the work, the level of what she's doing on her in her blog and the knowledge and what she's expressing. It's the same as you. I'm just like, how are you only doing this a year and you know this much? You know what I mean? And so, but she said the same thing that she has just been devouring it and reading about it. You know, she's, you know, mm-hmm. her whole life, just like you have. Right. It's, it's something else. There's, you know, I think it's, it's just innate. I mean, you could go to school forever and not be able to do it, even though you've learned about it. I think it it's just like a, a painter or a writer. Mm. I, it's just, a, it's something inside you. Mm. It, it's hard to describe, but either you kind of have it or you don't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So now tell us a little bit about the blog, because I also know from one of our discussions off air is that you, I mean, I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag. You have like a thousand followers on this blog that's only six or seven months old i mean is that is the blog even that that old uh it is i don't have a thousand yet that's my goal oh. i only have i only have a little over 300 oh, right now okay, but okay. my goal is a thousand okay but even so 300 in six months <laughs> that's amazing and so how have you tell us a little bit about that for somebody that whether they're a new designer or not if they're a new design blogger how mm-hmm. have you grown your awareness 300 so what's happening with that are you having a call to action in your social media like tell us how you are getting 
getting 300 readers of that blog in such a short period of time? Well, the name change helped a lot. People like the name change. And I actually did a Facebook post telling a little bit of the background, like I described to you about the name change. Oh, I missed that. I got a lot from that, actually, because people want that, you know, that story, that genuine, you know, person. And uh, I'm actually working, I think, next month with Nicole Heimer on um, doing a little call to action or a little something to boost the subscription uh, right there, because that's something I actually started working with Mark about, because I'm like, you know, you have all these followers, you have this blog, and he started uh, mentoring me on the actual blog and getting the subscription rate. So I'm still, I'm still kind of trying to dial that in. The biggest thing that I do right now is I'll post the blog on social media, mostly Facebook, and then I'll just boost that post. And that does pretty well. But and so, I'd like it to be more. <laughs> okay. And so what happened, so you haven't been including a call to action in that post so far. You've just been putting it in your Facebook and boosting it, and then it's been getting, it's little by little growing. I do have a pop-up. Like when you go to my website, this like, you know, subscribe, blah, 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 but it's, you know, it's very generic and everybody has that. So I want to try to brainstorm to see if I can do something that's a little bit more attractive. Okay. Um, yeah. And in the actual blog, I, my call to action at the end of it, is, it'll be like, you know, if you can't do, you know, the things that I've written about here or you just don't want to, you know, call me, I'll do it for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, that's where I met with that. On, that's on- amazing. And your Facebook, you also, well, I, again, I have old news, old information from four days ago. Four days ago, you had 809 <laughs> <laughs> followers on Facebook. So I, you probably have 900 by now, but how did <laughs> no, you- I don't think so. <laughs> how did you grow that? that Following. That's friends and family. That's okay. friends and family. Um, well, you know, and friends of friends and also boosting the Facebook posts. I usually boost them to friends of people who like your page and their friends. That okay. seems to get the most added likers okay. and um, fellow interior designers from my Ivy group um, on there. Just um, they I actually probably got like a couple hundred likes truthfully from my Ivy group on Facebook. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So, and so, you know, what's happening then is the blog post title is interesting. It's catching their name, their attention. Then the blog post itself title is of use of value to somebody. So they're clicking on it in Facebook. It's bringing them to your website. And then there's a pop-up that says, do you want to be on our email list? Or do you want, do you want to be follow the blog or something like that? Yes, just very generic. Nothing, nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. I was experimenting with doing like, hey, would you like my, you know, great latest paint tips, you know, sign up here, you know, because a lot of designers do that. And then they say that gets some crazy subscribers. Mm. But I haven't really put that in motion yet. Okay, okay. Well, sometimes you just have to ask. I mean, I have to tell you, (laughs) while we're recording this over the weekend, so this show will go up in a few days, but the previous weekend to the show, I was just like sitting there and I was like, huh, I should just make a Canva Canva thing that tells people that they can subscribe to our newsletter, our newsletter, our email list. And I put it up and I looked and we had like 12 people. I'm like, okay, awesome. 18 months later, Luann, <laughs> all she had to do is ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to redo that. That's, I did get some good results putting on Facebook. Hey, subscribe here. So I actually need to redo that. Yeah. Did you see it? I just said, Hey, you know, do you want to join mm-hmm. our email list? To, you know, text 444 to mm-hmm. 999 shared to design it. this. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I'm going over to the window works email and here comes one and here comes another. I'm like, Oh, isn't that brilliant? Such a great idea. Yeah. Just ask people. <laughs> just ask. Who to thunk? <laughs> Too funny. Anyway. So, all right. So I like that. So you're really, um, Um, I think the big takeaway here, Darla, is that you are actually doing many of the things that the guests over the last year and a half have expressed that they do that works for them. And that's my big thing. I feel like so many of us fall into the trap of hearing a great idea and really understanding the value of the idea. And then that's it. They make a list in a notebook and they don't follow through with it. But you have really very intentionally taken the time to do the different things that a lot of these designers have shared over the year that have worked for them, right? 
I have. Um, Nicole Heimer actually was one of the first people that I um, contacted and reached out to as far from the business end, you know, after Mark, um, to do my branding, to do, you know, my website copy. And she actually really helped me out a lot getting started there also. Mm. And um, what was it? Kimberly I- Selden, her book, her flat rate. Oh, I've been you- reading that and experimenting with doing the flat fee or the hourly. I'm still kind of going back and forth. Mm. Um, yeah, like Fred Burns, you know, what's your only? I definitely, I think I have an only. <laughs> yes. Matter of fact, that's funny that you say that because I had forgotten to say that when, before we talked, I, you know, had read your website because here's the thing. I've been reading your blog, interacting with you on social media, but I had not gone over to read your website. And so in anticipation of the interview, I'm like, well, when, yeah, you got to do the rest of the homework here. And so in your about you page, you say to the effect of that interior design, I'm going to totally paraphrase, but like interior design is not a life or death situation. And, but my previous career, I certainly have experience with hiring situations and, you know, I can take the stress out of this for you because, you know, whatever, I'm calm, cool and collected, whatever it is. And I remember thinking, the heck did she do? (laughs) You know, and I'm thinking, well, I actually thought you were probably a nurse or a doctor. Right. In my wildest dreams, would I have never have guessed if you had said, if we had just played the game, Guess what it is? I would have said, "Were you a doctor?" You would have said, "No." I said, "A nurse." You would have, no. I could have won money. Yes, I because I, I would have been like, I don't know, were you a crossing guard? Like I never would have ever. Of then I probably would have I said, like guess. a window washer on scaffolding. Not in a million years would I have said a sergeant at Miami Dade. <laughs> that was actually Nicole's idea because she was like, "What was your previous career? You know, let's bring what what makes you you." Mm. And I'm like, "Well, you know, I know the importance of having a crazy stressful job and needing like some respite. You know, having to." Yeah come in and and have a sanctuary so she's like yes let's go with that but we didn't mention it um the job per se because I was like do I want to come out with this because Mm. you know it doesn't really scream interior designer you know law enforcement but you know but I think I'm different so yes. Hopefully people people can get past that, you know. But. Well, and I like the way the two of you ultimately handled it. As a matter of fact, and this is like the fourth time we're mentioning Nicole. So I'm just going to say Nicole is Nicole Heimer and the owner of Curio Electro. And she was episode 125. And she is a rock star brander. I've actually am working with Nicole myself right now in the middle knee deep on uh, launching a website for based around Luann Igarra and the podcast and everything. And she is so helpful. But the thing is, I think that it is really good the way you did it because it's intriguing. But I do Mm -hmm. agree with you. I think that if I, I think not me personally, because I already felt like I got to know you, but if it were a stranger coming to the website and you see police officer turned into your designer it's sort of like come on especially if they have a warrant they're yeah. totally not gonna hire me <laughs> what are we sol exactly <laughs> but i think it's something that you know if i were talking to you is one of the first things i would ask you but in a conversation you can see and hear and not judge the way you would just maybe offhand say i'm not hiring a designer who was a policeman that's ridiculous <laughs> you, you never know i mean people are you know people have their own little idiosyncrasies so I I thought it was enough just to say listen just trust me I had a stressful job I'm going to take the stress away from you that that's that's good yeah and it is smart it is smart the way you said it that you understand the value of coming back to a place that feels like the sanctuary against everything that happens on the other side of the door and that does create a really really nice visual and creates a nice feeling when you read it it's it's good for you you guys did a good job I'm not surprised yeah thanks Nicole yes definitely and yeah, and so then like, so that's awesome. So between Mark and Nicole and Fred Burns and Kimberly Selden, like you mm-hmm. have gotten like your design 101 education, <laughs> right? I have. And also I have to say that um, one of the most valuable sources of information that I've received is through, I had mentioned the Facebook group on Ivy, which is a whole, like almost over a thousand, I want to say 1200 interior designers on a private Facebook group wow. that just get together and they're so giving with their information and actually um Last week, Susan Winterstein, whom you've interviewed mm, um, from Savvy yes. Savvy Interiors, yes. uh, was so gracious to give me a call for half an hour and give me, you know, advice on how she structures her fees and her process, and Isn't just a, so just nice? incredible, very helpful. Isn't that so nice? I mean, that reminds me of. Um, um, 
uh, Monique Duarte. She had the same thing. She was describing how when she was starting out, she knew somebody. I want to say, I think it was through Facebook, but I could be talking out of turn there. But she just reached out to this Mm -hmm. gentleman because she admired him as a designer and as a person and as a business person and asked for some help and some advice. And he was like, sure. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so it's so amazing. And you're so lucky because Susan is what a business person she is. She is. She is. Uh, we have a thing over there on, on the Ivy group. It's what would Susan do? <laughs> <laughs> Almost every time someone posts, it's like no WWSD. Way. Oh, yeah. She's That's like the go to. Right. And it, she's just so selfless and so helpful. Well, I mean, and it just c- comes through. And I mean, it's her personality that, you know, she's we know that she has savvy interiors, but then that savvy giving uh, by design where right. she does the rooms for the children afflicted with the uh, serious illnesses is insane. I mean, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it is. She posts on that. I, I am on her Facebook group on that. It's so moving. And what she does for those families is incredible. I know. It's. I mean, we, we really have had some amazing people on this show in this last year and a half that are really just so smart and so giving and so talented. And, and the crazy thing is, is I'm in such awe of awe of all of them and I don't even really talk about their design I mean forget the design that's a whole nother (laughs) layer right but um, just what they're doing with their businesses and stuff so before I let you go I want to ask a couple of things because since your business is so new Darla we've sort of you know it's all fun and games and it's been great and you have 7,000 followers here and 800 there in a short period of time (laughs) it sort of makes it seem easy I I can't imagine that it has always been easy and I'm a little curious did you have a time in these last couple of months where you just went, oh, good Lord, I left an amazing paying job with benefits, and what did I do? <laughs> well, yes and no. I mean, I have not regretted leaving the police department because I, I was done. You know, that was that was ready to go. But, uh, yeah, I have had some moments where I've told uh, my partner, Natalie, that, I can't do it. I would just want to write the blog because Mm -hmm. of how overwhelming it's been in such a short time. Mm -hmm. And you get, I mean, I think a lot of women, professional women get that upper limit Mm -hmm. thing. I I forget who, who came with that, but you're like, Oh, that's, you know, the success, you know, fear of success sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it does get overwhelming and you have to like take a deep breath and say, okay, you got this. Mm -hmm. And so what happens? Have How have you experienced it in a real moment? Is it been when you are in the middle and maybe you have more proposals than you have time to do or you are in the middle of doing a design plan that maybe you're unsure of? Like what has been a trigger that you can think of and share a moment where someone could relate to where you just felt like, uh, I'm not sure that I did the right thing here? Well, I've been a by myself, you know, solopreneur, as you like to call it. And with all the stuff coming in, the design part isn't the problem because, you know, like I said, we we pretty much have that been doing that for years. It's the logistics, Mm -hmm. the actual the ordering, you know, and the receiving and getting all your vendors together and your tradespeople, all that doing it by myself has been a little overwhelming when you're also going out and doing consultations, doing the design work, doing one, uh, two blogs now, because I also write for Tastefully Inspired. So I actually said, okay, take a deep breath, be proactive. And I hired an assistant (laughs) to take off, yeah, to take off some of the the stuff that uh, is taking time away from actually marketing the business and and working on the branding, the stuff that's actually going to bring in the clients. Mm -hmm. So that has helped a tremendous amount. Okay. Okay. And so your day to day, do you, are you, I would think uh, this few months in business, are you still trying to work your way around through systems and getting things orderly? Or do you have certain things where you're like, Hey, I've got that locked down and this is where I, what, what's, what's that like? Talk to somebody who's really like, maybe right. they're going to start tomorrow. And you're like, here's the pitfalls. If How about this? How about this is something that I didn't do when I started in January and I wish I did. Anything come to mind or just something yes. that you – okay, good. What? Actually, going back to Susan, uh, Winterstein again, she was kind enough to share with me her process, but not just like tell me how to do it. From the uh, from the Ivy group, she actually shared a printout, like a, the process and what to expect. And there's it's actually a, a little chart, an organized chart that tells the client exactly how we work in a systematic form from the original consultation to the reveal to the photography. Mm-hmm. And now, and because she gave me that, 
I have a system in place mm. for every single project. And that's how we do it. That's how we go by it. And I had mentioned before, I'm still still trying to figure out the flat rate versus the hourly or the or the or the hybrid version. So mm. that is something we're still planning with. But this process that I have is like gold. Wow. That's amazing so. that she just shared that with everybody. I'm telling you, she's yes. she's the best. But now, doesn't Kimberly Selden also just provide provides that information to everybody as well, or do you have she to does, be part she of her group? She also does. Yes, yeah, you do. I think have to be part of her group. Right. Um, she does have a 15 step also. Right. And I was actually just on her website the other day because I was like, ah, let me see. Do I want to go? I want to sign up again. And I did. I signed up again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so because I'm constantly reading, constantly you know honing in and fine tuning. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's valuable there too, right? I mean, she's just of so course. smart, right? Yeah. She is. She's incredibly smart. And her podcast also is yes. brilliant. I love it. It's yes. really helpful also. Yes, she does have. That's the Business of Design podcast. And that really is very helpful too. Um, so I, it's amazing. So what would you say? Uh, so what you would say is your 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 thing was to seek out someone, either a Kimberly Selden where you could pay mm-hmm. for the information as part of the course or a mentor who'd be willing to share it with you so that coming out the gate, you have a process for onboarding a client and having taking that client all the way to completion. So that's, right. that's, a, that's a thing that you would say, please try and find that for yourself. And then what would you say, is there anything that comes to mind if I say something that you did that you just have been so pleased with the way it's worked out or that you could share or something like that? Well, I think I got really lucky because I, I know I think I'm mentioning Ivy to death. But when I started, I actually signed up for uh, Ivy really uh, quickly, and all my invoices, all my proposals, and everything were really streamlined in that way. So I'm glad I did that, mm. and I'm also glad that I just I just went for it. <laughs> you know, I did it. I <laughs> I quit the day job, and I I got came out of my shell, and I'm in you know, clients homes telling them what the heck to do with their house. That's it. You, you know, you just, just you, it, did it. it doesn't happen if you don't do it. Well, Darla, I have to say you are, like I said it a few moments ago, you are speaking what is so near and dear to me. As a matter of fact, I did the IWCE keynote in Charlotte and the title of the sp- of the presentation is Excellence is a Decision because to me, if it, it's again, you can't just gather the information. You can't just wish for things. You can't intend for things. You can't want for things. You have to decide to do them. You have to make a move. You have to put it into action. And you have done that. Not only, like you said, just deciding like... I, I had a year left on the force, but that's it. I'm at the wall. I need to do this now, right? Yeah, I had to do it. It was just get, becoming too busy in my customer service, and my business was just more important to me. I wouldn't hire a part-time designer, and I didn't want to be one. Mm. And so the thing is, I guess what you're saying is that when you started it in December, January, knowing that you had one year left for the force, you expected it to be something that grew slowly on the side and that you, yes. were, isn't that a riot? I expected it. Be, I expected it to be a year before I had my first client. I'm like, well, this is going to take forever. <laughs> but because of all the great things I learned from uh, your show, um, it isn't just like, something? yeah, like a tumbleweed. That's amazing. I mean, Darla, you know what? I I love it because I really believe in all the things that we talk about on the show. I mean, a lot of times in the conversations that I have with the different designers about their business, I know full well that there are things that we have done for many, many years. And so you know, sometimes I'll say we do them too, and sometimes I just leave my mouth shut and say that's a great idea, that's la la la. <laughs> but, you know, the point is that, is that I know that it works, but to see that you have done it and here, and I, and honestly, if somebody were asking me, do I think you should quit your job when you have one year to full, I, I'm assuming it was a full <laughs> maturation of all the health benefits. It wasn't. And, it wasn't actually. I was going to go at 20, which would have been five years early anyway, because I had already decided oh, I'm going to do this. Oh. Yeah. But so, it just, it, it just ballooned so quickly that I cut that goal. A, a short a year and a half. Oh my goodness. But see, that's the thing. Like I was going to say, if somebody said, Oh, do you think I should start this on the side and let it grow for a year, year and a half while I do my benefits and blah, blah, blah. I would have been like, yes, you should. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have been like, well, it'll probably be so darn busy in four months. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it is, it comes down to how intentional are you about the things that you're doing? And, and I, I share with you because I have been experiencing a very similar 
trajectory with the podcast. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's the same thing. It's like in, in, in implementing all the things that I know are good and all the things that drive a business. And it is, it's the same thing. It's just taking off like crazy. And um, it's, it's, you have to do things. And I, there's nothing that gets under my skin more than someone who says, Oh, that's a good idea, but it won't work for me. It's like, oh yeah, oh, that drives me insane. <laughs> I, you at least try it, right? Just try it. Exactly. That's yeah. like, all oh, right. So you really didn't want to be better. You just wanted to talk about being better. <laughs> exactly, and sit there and cry about yes, it. Yeah, and I, no, that's, just, yeah. just do it. I'm not your girl. You're not getting sympathy from me. Next out of the lane. You know what I mean? It's like move it on over. <laughs> yeah, at least try it. If yeah. you try it and you say it didn't work for you, prop, you know, props, but. But, you know, if you sit there and you're, and you're like, oh, this isn't going to work for me, you know, other people can do it, but I can't, you know what, then you're probably right. Right, right. And so that's what I love, Darla, is that you are the actual living proof that somebody can start a business, they can mindfully and intentionally collect great information, implement that information, and three months later be so darn busy she has to hire an employee. Good for you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's awesome. So I just have to say I really, really, really enjoy now actually knowing you by voice and not just by typing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And everybody should look and sign up for your blog at Wing Nuts and Wallpaper. They can find it at Darla Powell Interiors, right? And then also right. DarlaPowell.com. DarlaPowell.com. <laughs> and then also over at Tastefully Inspired and see what Mark and Karina and you have another person over there that I haven't interacted with. What's her name? Kathleen, but I haven't interacted with her either. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes two of us. Right. But I'm aware of her and I, it's almost like I know the byline. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, me too. I think, I think, I don't even think I've been properly introduced. Right. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So, but, and, and of course, you know, we have the podcast for business of design. We have Mark's podcast and Mark's YouTube at Tastefully Inspired and the blog at Tastefully Inspired. These are all terrific resources in addition to this podcast for helping you get your business you know under under lock and key and you can you know be a rock star like darla in six months <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> oh man but thanks so much for sharing everything with us darla I'm, I'm really looking forward to having this front seat and watching your business go just up 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 because you are really just doing everything so intentionally and so well and i'm really very happy for you thank you so much luann it's my pleasure I'd like to thank my sponsor, Cherish, and to let you know about this gem of a resource. Cherish, which can be found at www.chairish.com slash trade, is the premier online marketplace where design pros just like you can go to source the best vintage decor and furniture. With more than 125,000 curated items for sale, Cherish makes it easy, fun, and fast for you to find stylish pieces at great deals to suit every client and every project. The items are ready to ship, hint, hint, which means no waiting, and Cherish offers a two-day return policy. Here's some more good stuff. Cherish trade members enjoy special benefits, including cash back on every purchase, white glove delivery, and exclusive concierge service. Sign up for their trade program today at www.cherish.com slash trade. So I'm not really sure what else I can add to this that I didn't say in the interview, except that I will just say point blank, if you are an interior designer and you don't have a project in the pipeline, there's no excuse now. If one year ago, Darla can be a sergeant in the police force, and now after only seven months, three of those which are full time, and she's busy because she's followed the advice of Kimberly Selden, Mark McDonough, Susan Winterstein, Fred Burns, Nicole Heimer, and the others who have shared their time with us, and you haven't done it, then shame on you. Business is business, and if you do the things that successful people before you have done, you will be successful too. 
Darla has invested time and money, and she has invested in building relationships, all to get her business off the ground and running. And I'll tell you what I told Darla off the air. One year from now, I want to interview her again, and I want to understand and see the growth and changes that she makes in another full year of her business. And the question I have for you is, if you were sitting there right now in your business, and I interviewed you one year from now, what measurable growth would you be able to share with us? Think about that and then act on it. Decide what you will do in order to be profitable and successful. Okay? You can do it. I know you can. <laughs> Seriously, I know you can. All righty. Now, we're getting very close to Las Vegas market. It's only about three weeks away. The two main events that I would love for you to come to are on Monday the 31st at the Noir Showroom for a live audience participation game show called Name That Vendor. I will be your game show host, so it's probably going to be fairly insane because you know how shy I am and all. So, you know, come on out to this, see what it's all about. This event is hosted by Designer Inc. and of course, Noir. The second event is Tuesday, August 1st. This is called Design Uncorked, How to Go from Design Firm to Design Empire. I'll be doing a live interview with the rock star herself, Kelly Ellis. This event is at the Kravitz Showroom and is sponsored by My Doma Studio and, of course, Kravitz Inc. We will have plenty of time at both events for meet and greet. So please come on out and meet Kelly Ellis and meet the people from Kravitz and My Doma and Heather Gillette of Designer Inc. You know, it's going to be really pretty something else. All right. And remember that you can get on our email list very easily by uh, just simply texting 444-999. And in the field, text Design Biz, D E S I G N B I Z, no caps, no spaces. All right. And lastly, I'm just going to put it out there again. I would love it if you would take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review the show in iTunes. I have to say, I know you don't think about it. I know you don't think that it matters. I know you think it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to the universe, but I got to tell you, it does. All right. And I know that it, it matters so much so that this past weekend, I finally sat down and took the time to go in and review some of the newer shows that I've been listening to these last couple of months and had not rated and reviewed them. So I understand that it takes some effort, but you really do need to know that to the podcast host, first of all, it is so valuable um, from on a personal level to understand the things that we as hosts are doing that you like. So that's very helpful to us, but it's also very valuable to us on a business level. Okay. Cause it's not a hobby. So if you haven't done it yet for a well-designed business, I would be very, very grateful if you would take a minute and rate and review the show. Thank you so much for that in advance. And thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have an excellent day. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.